Hi students, Assalamualaikum and greetings. So this is chapter 4 on market segmentation, targeting and positioning. I divided this chapter into two videos, okay? So in this first part of the chapter 4, I'm going to discuss you three uh, learning objective, which the first one is criteria for successful segmentation. Secondly, the basis for segmenting consumer market, and the third one will be the steps in segmenting consumer market. And later on, in the next video, okay, I'm going to discuss with you on the strategies for selecting target markets as well as positioning. So let's get started with the first learning objective, which is the criteria for successful segmentation. Now, first thing first, you need to know what is actually market segmentation. In chapter 1, okay, you already know what is market. Okay, as you know, market is actually people, yeah, which could be a potential buyer or could be your buyers or customers. Okay, so when you talk about segmentation, you are actually subgrouping them or dividing them, all right? into certain criteria or certain characteristics okay so why do marketers need to do market segmentation basically the purpose of segmentation is to enable the marketer to tailor the marketing mixes remember your four p's those are your marketing mixes yeah to meet the needs of one or more specific segments so as i already told you just now market are people right and um it could be also organization yeah not necessarily just the consumers market but also businesses or organizations but in this particular chapter we're going to cover into your with according to your syllabus which is on the consumers market only okay so uh, a market summon itself is actually a subgroup or of people okay subgroup of people or the organization sharing one or more characteristics that cause them to have similar sub uh, similar product needs okay um, this is actually market segmentation definition which is dividing a market into smaller segments all right segment is actually subgroup of people uh -huh, okay with some distinct needs okay characteristics or behavior that might require separate marketing strategies or mixes take an example of this particular picture all right you can see this our market all right and you can actually group them together into certain characteristics or some distinct needs all right the first one that you can be very clear or very easy for you to actually segment them is according to perhaps gender okay so you have female customers or female market and you also have the male markets all right later on we're going to look into each and every um segmentation basis all right so that you know how else can you actually separate them but even though they are separated each and every subgroup or each and every people in that particular segment will want to buy the similar products and might have similar needs so first thing first okay you need to know what are the criteria for successful segmentation because um you cannot simply divide your market into whatever characteristic that you think you should do or you wanted to do all right you must make sure that when you want to segment this particular market there must be a, a solid reason okay basically uh by looking at what makes that particular segment gonna be successful or no first one substantiality which is you're gonna select a segment that must be large enough to justify the development and maintenance of a special marketing mix so you have to bear in mind yeah the moment you create a segment you're going to create a special four piece for them all right so when you want to divide every uh, market into subgroups all right you must create different products all right for them so that is what it means by preparing or developing and maintaining that particular special marketing mix here right and you must make sure that when you're serving the specific needs of this segment whatever its size it must be profitable second successful criteria for segmentation is accessibility that means the firm must be able to reach the market okay reach the member of this targeted segment with the customized marketing mix again marketing mix your four piece yeah and then the responsiveness of that particular market a market segment must respond differently to some aspect of the marketing mix than do other segment so that means when you create a segment 
you have a product for this particular segment. Let's say you have product A for segment A, product B to segment B. You must mention that when you create product A for segment A, segment uh, the market in segment A must be the one who buy that product. Okay, you don't want to see that when you create a product for segment A, segment B also is buying from you that same product. That means you shouldn't separate segment A and segment B because that particular product is demanded by both segments. So in this case, the responsiveness means that product A should be bought by product uh, by uh, market A or segment A and product B should be bought by segment B. Alright, for example, Nivea. I bet you know Nivea brand, right? It's actually a uh, skincare. So um, there are, uh, you can see from uh, generally, uh, you have two segments, which is male and female. All right. So you have Nivea skincare for men. Okay. And also Nivea skincare. In general, it doesn't mention for male or female, but you know, ladies, all right. Or the female are the one who actually buy the Nivea um, skincare. All right. Unless you put Nivea men, then you will see that men are the one who buy and use that particular product you don't see that as a woman or as a lady um, you buy Nivea men for yourself right so that it means by responsiveness so you respond in a way that if you see if you're a lady if you're a girl you see Nivea men that means you know that product is not for you all right because those products are for men that means different segment than yours so you be the one who actually buy the Nivea uh, without any men words in that particular brand or product right and lastly the fourth criteria for successful segmentation is identifiability and measurability that means the segment must be identifiable and their size are measurable you can identify the market in that segment okay it's easy to see is a man or woman right now okay or even age um perhaps of course, we talk about not a specific age, but perhaps a group of age or generation. All right. Uh, so you can see teenagers. So you can identify how does teenagers look like. Maybe like me. Right. Or you can say that elderly people. So the products that you are selling is actually for uh, people who are above 60 years old. Can you identify people who are actually 60 years old? Yes, isn't it? By looking at their face by looking at their hair color all right so in general you are able to identify them all right or if you are let's say for example you are selling um slimming products again okay? slimming products so you have that particular uh let's say uh shake what they call normally they have the milk or the shake the protein shake kind of thing all right it's for those people who wanted to lose some weight so you are able to identify these particular people by looking at their size right or not Okay, so that is what it means by identifiability and of course measur measurability in a way that you know how many of them. Okay, roughly you are able to identify um, based on the population and based on their characteristics, you are able to measure the size of this particular market. Then you can consider yourself having a successful segmentation. Okay, next we move on to 4.0. Okay, we're going to learn on basis for segmenting consumer markets. Now, a segmentation base, okay, or variable is the characteristics of individuals, groups, or organization that is used to divide a total market into segment. Okay, so um, how can you actually group them? It is actually by this particular segmentation basis, all right? So market can be segmented using a single or multiple variables. So let's look. There are five, yeah, five bases for segmenting consumer market. The first one is geographic segmentation. So you can group them into geographic. Okay. Second, demographic segmentation. I hope you still remember what is demographic that you have learned in chapter two. All right. Next is the benefit segmentation. Okay. Number four is usage rate segmentation and number five is psychographic segmentation. So let's look first at the geographic segmentation. Geographic, from the word geographic itself, you know it is actually dividing the market into different geographical units. Okay, so how can you divide? What are your geographical units? Okay, typically it's 
by states, okay, or by countries, all right, or continents. Continents is like you have the um, Asia, okay, you have the North America, you have South America, you have Africa. What else continents you have in this world? How many continents are there? Seven, yeah? Please make sure you know what the seven continents, all right? Then you have region, okay, like the North or West Malaysia, East Malaysia, right? Those are regions, okay? States, of course, you know. Um, countries, of course, yes, and also some cities, okay? Uh, and another uh, unit of geographic is climate, okay? Climate is, of course, uh, typically related to the weather, all right? Which frequently being used because of its dramatic impact on residents' needs and purchasing behavior, Okay, so uh, what type of uh, climate that that particular country has and if you are selling your product into that particular geographic, let's say a country in uh, New Zealand, for example. So what would be the climate in New Zealand now? All right. Or in uh, China, for example, what would be the climate in China right now? So uh, a typical uh, products that you need to look into is actually uh, clothing lines, yeah, the clothing lines because it has a very uh, what they call substantial and also a significant impact on people's daily life. Okay, if you have winter, autumn, spring, and also summer, different types of outfit are needed, isn't it? So um, let's say in Malaysia, what type of weather do we have? We have sunny and also rainy days all year round, isn't it? Okay, so you don't sell your, um, like now it's almost, it's already fin end of the fall and now we're going to, win going to winter, right, in the America. So you don't sell winter coats in Malaysia, for example, like people in Malaysia don't wear winter coat in Malaysia unless you want to go overseas, lah, right? So uh, that is one way how you actually can segment your market right next is demographic segmentation okay so the demographic of course you know what it is is actually dividing market on the basis of the demographic variables okay so you have age gender age typically not specific age yeah group of age yeah the gender itself income ethnic background and also family life cycle so let's look at the variables of age so for age segmentation, you can have a specific group, all right, that tremendously attractive markets for a variety of products and categories. So look at this picture, for example, you know, you don't tell, oh, this is like early 20 years old, this couple. No, right? Not. You can say that this is an old couple, all right? Where what type of products that they might actually required or need right so normally they will buy and eat things that are very healthy for their health right so you can actually segment like i told you just on the the multivitamins okay so these are the group of people that required those particular multi um, vitamins for example aniline all right you know aniline milk right so aniline brand Okay, they have some um, age limitation for women who are actually uh, above 50 years old. So they will require a different kind of um, formula in that particular milk uh, to enhance and also to strengthen their bones. All right, so they have aniline gold. All right, for other than or those younger than 50 years old, then you will have the normal or typical aniline right so for babies also you have different formula milk right so if you go to supermarkets right you can go to the uh, milk section and you will see that there are many uh, formula milks and even let's say Enfalac for example or Infagro for example so they have for different um, age of the baby or even the toddlers right so there is age segmentation Next is gender segmentation. Like I told you, the Nivea and Nivea men just now, right? So marketers of many items such as clothes, footwear, personal care items, even magazines, okay, and cosmetics commonly segment by gender, right? And then you have income segment, income segment block, income segmentation, okay? So income level influences the consumer wants and determine their buying power, okay? So that is when uh, you know bawal exclusive, right? 
So those of you guys, if you do not know what is bawal exclusive, it is not ikan bawal, okay? Bawal exclusive is actually shawls or um, scarf, yeah? For different income segment, whereby you can you can actually get a piece of shawl at uh, 10,000 ringgit. Yes, it's 10,000 ringgit for one piece. But perhaps it's not for us. For us, it is very expensive. But for those people, orang kayangan, might think that that 10,000 is a very cheap price, all right? So that is for income segmentation right and family life cycle segmentation whereby uh, the family life cycle okay is a series of life stages where they are defined by a combination of age marital status and the presence or absence of children this is of course uh, very much very much related to how do people change when they wanted to buy things right not so uh, let's say your parents yeah or your father typically your mom when they want to buy let's say um toothpaste right a toothpaste for the consumption of everybody in the house they will buy a jumbo size right not a bigger size even shampoo also for everybody to use in the toilet right uh in shower gel for example they will buy in large uh bottles right so that is when there is a presence of children all right but if you are a single person okay or if let's say you go to hostel last time when you want to use it for your own single single usage for you only you will not buy a giant bottle isn't it okay typically you will buy the smaller tube for your uh, toothpaste right shampoo also smaller size because you know it is for your one person consumption all right so if you're single typically you will buy smaller size all right but when you have um a big family then you might want to buy a bigger size that's why marketers they offer in different sizes right smaller one for one person use or a jumbo size for the whole family usage okay next is the um third one yeah remember the first one was geographic second is demographic segmentation now we move on to the third segmentation base which is segmentation by benefits so in the benefit segmentation there are two variables that you can use either occasion or benefit sort well by occasion it is when you divide the market into segments according to the occasions when buyer get the idea to buy okay when they actually make the purchase or when they actually use the purchase item okay for example the typical one is actually during festive season okay so let's say christmas is around the corner right uh, when you go to this uh department stores okay or even the malls they started to come up with all those christmas decoration already it is only november early november yeah okay lah. okay it's about that so that is when they know those people who celebrate christmas okay you'll be getting so excited to see all those christmas trees christmas enamels and so on isn't it so you can start to see uh, even starbucks for example they start to have all those christmas holidays drinks right and um they know at this particular moment when is christmas it is 25th of december right but now it is actually still early of november okay so people already get the idea to buy okay and uh you started to plan what you wanted to buy for your christmas okay and when will actually people make the purchase okay and when they will use it of course for christmas you know for sure that on the 25th december that is when people will use the purchase item all right the second variable in this benefit segmentation is the benefit stock all right so this is when they divide or marketers divide the market into segment according to the different benefits that consumers seek from the product okay i know you buy things right and everybody buy the things the same thing for example but each and everybody will actually buy the same thing for different purposes okay like for example a sport shoes okay because um, you are always at home right so you eat a lot and then you want to be healthy a bit so what you need a sport shoes right now so what would be the benefit that you will look for in that particular sport shoes basically just to make you comfortable doing some sports activities isn't it but to an athlete all right athletes when they want to buy a sport shoes okay it is for their better performance all right or for makes for making them 
perform better in that particular sports. Alright, right. Like for example, um, Usain Bolt. You know Usain Bolt. He's a marathon runner. Okay, or Eliud Kipling, for him to run faster. Alright. So the benefit that the athlete look for or seeking from the product is actually for better performance. Alright. Uh, while for other people that are non-athletes, right, perhaps they just buy that particular sport shoes just for the comfortability of wearing it. Okay, next. Usage rate segmentation. This is the fourth segmentation, yeah? This is when you're dividing market by the amount of product bought or consumed. And, okay, you can also look in terms of the frequency of use or consumption for a product in a period of time, all right? So, the first variable is on the user status. User status is segmenting into non-users, okay? You are looking when you create something, a marketing mix. Are these for your non-users? That means that person never become your user and can never be your user. But somehow already you segment them and you don't want to create a marketing mix for them. Yes, that could happen, right? Or is it for an ex-user? That means that person used to buy your product, okay, but now have shifted to somewhere else or other brands, right? Or is it for potential user, first-time user, or even for regular user? All right. Second variable is usage rate itself. Okay. And remember, yeah, in the usage rate segmentation, you also have the variable of usage rate itself. Right. That means you are dividing into if let's say that person is a light user, perhaps you have a different uh, marketing mix for them. A medium user, a heavy user of a product. Okay. Or hardcore user of the product. Okay. So that is when you divide it based on the usage rate. Like water, for example. Um, if you drink a lot of water, that means you will buy bigger mineral water, the 1.5 liters, right? Okay. If you uh, don't really drink a lot, okay, it's so difficult for you to drink mineral water or drinking water, then it, you could be a light user. Okay. Next, number three is the loyalty status okay still in the usage rate segmentation loyalty status where you can actually divide your market in terms of how loyal they are to a brand okay or how loyal they are to a store or the companies all right so there are three categories of loyalty completely loyal somewhat loyal and no loyalty at all are you completely loyal to certain brand or certain store, like when you want to buy things, right? It will always from that particular store. You will never go to other places. Okay, that means you're completely loyal. Okay, but of course, we don't really become so loyal like that, right? But uh, for example, these Apple users, yeah? Typically, all right, those completely loyal Apple users, they are called themselves Maxilets or Macolites, or sometimes make hits so what they do is that they will always buy whatever apple produce okay now they have iphone 12 right not? so they started to buy iphone 12 okay they also have apple watch they have airports they have apple tv they also have macbook they also have ipad all right so everything is from top to toe yeah probably from top to toe is from apple from top to toe, normally your apparel, lah. let's say you are really completely loyal to Adidas, for example. So from top to toe, your cap is Adidas, your t-shirt is Adidas, your pants is Adidas, your socks is also Adidas, and your uh, shoes is also Adidas brand. So you, that means you're completely loyal to Adidas. Well, there's also segmentation based on a loyalty status that is for those people who are somewhat loyal. That means you are not really loyal to one brand, but you are perhaps loyal to two or three brands, okay, or four, or not four, or favor, okay, one brand while sometimes you buy other brands, right? So typically, this is on um, apparel, lah, okay, apparel, so you don't have Adidas all the way, right, not? Boring lah, pakai Adidas every, uh, all the time, right, not? So you might have some other brands like Nike, Under Armour, okay, North Face and so on. Okay, and another loyalty status, there is not loyal at all. Okay, there is no loyalty whereby you always buy different brand, different companies from different stores, okay, 
or um, you simply buy that particular brand whenever it is on sale. Okay, this one typically for shampoo lah. Okay, you know shampoo, right? Girls, I think you always change your shampoo, isn't it? So this man, you don't use one man one shampoo, right? So perhaps it's a bigger bottle. Okay, let's say you will use it for three months, right? So you buy some silk. Okay, next one, you know, oh, okay, the rate recognition because you recognize that or oh, your shampoo is about to run out. So what you do is actually you go to the Watson or Guardian. So sometimes you go to Watson, sometimes you go to Guardian. So that is when you talk about somewhat loyal. Okay, if you just simply buy from anywhere, then that means you are no loyalty. No loyalty at all to any of the stores here. Okay. So, uh, next month or next three months later on, you finish your shampoo, about to finish your shampoo. Then you go and buy uh, Dove because it's on sale. Okay. And after that, you have wear, you wear, like you have used that particular shampoo. And then next few months after that, it's, it has finished. You wanted to buy a different brand because another brand is on sale. All right. So, that is when you have no loyalty at all. I say girls buy shampoo because I think guys, you just use your shower gel or your soap as shampoo, so isn't it? Okay, alright, next one is the psychographic segmentation. This is the last segmentation. Remember, there are five segmentation. The first one you learned just now was... What was the first one? I think you can answer that, alright? Geographic, demographic, they have benefits. You have the usage and also psychographic is number five, all right? So in psychographic segmentation, you are dividing the market based on social class, lifestyles, or personality and characteristics. So for social class, of course, this is again related to the social class yeah, that you have learned in chapter two. So it is related to the wealth and also social status, all right? So perhaps different... Um, again, this is also, that's why they call it psychographic, yeah? It's a combination of the psychology and also demographic. So you have psychographic, okay? Demographic plus psychographic, uh, psychology. So you have the social class whereby demographically, you know, they are health wealthy, all right? And in terms of their social status, also they might carry certain um, status or image of their own. All right, next one is the lifestyle. Okay, so segmentation based on uh, psychographic. Second variable is lifestyle, whereby this is related to the time span, things that they value with their social economic characteristics, such as job, income, and also education. All right, so some people love to travel everywhere. Some people, they don't like to travel, but they like to shopping. Okay, so they shop a lot. And while some other people like to travel and also shop a lot, some other people are living in a healthy lifestyle, okay, or very active lifestyle. So things that they typically wanted to buy are related to the sports equipment, all right, healthy food and also uh, healthy drinks, all right. And lastly, in psychographic segmentation, where do I put myself? Let me put here lah. Okay, it's about personality or characteristics which related to traits, attitudes, and also habits. So, um, uh, very popular uh, personality traits that uh, is uh, well-known worldwide is actually the big five, okay? Where you can actually create this particular uh, product for people who are having perhaps openness, okay, or being conscientious or extraversion, agreeableness, and neurotism. Okay, neuroticism. That means there are some products, okay, perhaps for those people who are very inventive or curious, or you can also create a product for those people who are really consistent and also cautious. All right, uh, in terms of uh, organized or uh, easygoing kind of person. Okay, so there are different products for people who are really organized, like the OCD people, right? Right, And then uh, some people who are really easygoing, so perhaps it is just everything in one box. But for the organized people, you want a box with different compartments, all right? That you can actually organize things according to some system or what. 
Alright, so that is different products. Okay, but could be for different market that requires different needs for them. Extraversion like an outgoing person or a very reserved person. Okay, uh, especially when you talk about books, for example, a lot of people who are very reserved, they like to read books. Alright, but for people who are outgoing and energetic, perhaps they don't read books. Yeah, like you, I guess you play video games, right? Okay, and then you talk about uh, people who are very friendly or compassionate, compassionate, all right, or very people who are very challenging or detached, okay, and also some people who are sensitive and also some people who are really confident, okay, so these are actually um, a lot of, uh, what they call it, consideration, okay, when they create a product for this particular market or segment. Okay, last part, okay, last part in this particular video is on 4.3, which is steps in segmenting consumer market. How do you start to segment your consumer market? All right, first thing first, before you segment your consumer market, you must select first, okay, a product category or a market for you to study whether it is an existing one, is it a related one, or is it a new market? Okay, then you're going to look in terms of what could be the basis. Okay, normally you use basis. Yeah, remember the five bases just now? It could be a combination of any one, two, three, four, or five. Okay, of that particular market. Choose some basis. All right, then you select the segmentation descriptors. Okay, descriptors here are actually the variables. All right, which you can say like demographic, right? Based on what? Is it by gender? Is it gender and some age, right? Or is it together with the lifestyle? Okay, so that will be the segmentation descriptors. After that, the fourth step is you need to profile, analyze, and evaluate the segment. Okay, when you profile it, it should include the segment size, expected growth rates, purchase frequency, current brand usage, brand loyalty, and overall long-term sales and profit potential. Okay. And then when you do the analysis, you can rank the potential market segment, perhaps uh, by profit opportunity, okay, the risk and also consistency with the organization, mission and objective, right? So you, when you analyze, then you evaluate it, lah, all right? And the fifth step is you select the target market, all right? And decide on the marketing mix or mixes. And lastly, number six, is to design, implement, and maintain that four piece or any P that you do in this particular steps of segmentation. All right, I think it's very easy. First, you select product category, okay? Because uh, remember, yeah, in market orientation, as I explained to you in chapter one, remember market orientation, okay? You create a product based on what people want and the needs. And you are able to satisfy them, right? So, in creating a product, before you create that product, you must know what do people want. Okay, so that's why this chapter uh, actually discussed in overall about the segment or group of people that requires what type of needs, which later on you can create the product that will fulfill this particular needs. Okay, so with that, we finish the first part of this video, sorry, the first part of this chapter. Okay, and we'll continue the next one in the next video. I'll see you there.